A company uses a process cost accounting system and the weighted average method for inventory costs. The following information is available regarding direct labor for the current year. Good in process at the beginning of the year is 5,500 units, 80% complete. Good in process at the end of the year, December 31st, is 88 units at 40% complete. Units completed and transferred to finished good is 46,900 units. Direct labor cost during the year is 266,300. Your task is to calculate the equivalent units of production for direct labor for the year and calcul calculate the average cost per equivalent unit for direct labor, round to the nearest cents. The first thing I would suggest is kind of creating somewhat of a, a, um, a format that is uh, that organizes the data so it make it easier for you to complete this task. So I'm going to put start with the physical units. And then my next column is going to be percentage of work done or work complete. And then I'm going to calculate my equivalent units produced. This helps, and I, I wouldn't say it guarantees you'll get the answer correct, but certainly many students will have difficulty getting the answer correct when their data is not organized in a way that they can follow it. So this is just one trick I think might be helpful to you. So the first step is what um, are computed and completed and transfer units out? So that's what I'm going to start with here. I'm going to put it in this cell here. Completed and transferred out. And I'm going to just wrap it just to make it a little bit easier for you to follow. Okay. According to the instructions, it's 46,900 units. And how much is it complete? 100% of it. So essentially our equivalent units is 46,900 units. That's not too hard. I mean, it gets a little bit more tricky when we're dealing with some other things, but let's just deal with the easy stuff. Okay, we're not dealing with dollars here, so it's important for me to make this as clear as possible, 100%. Very good. Okay, the next step then is what is our ending goods, um, ending fin finished goods? Or not ending finished goods, but ending goods in process. So here's our ending goods in process. And again, I just want to like make things just easy for you to see and organize it so that it's not so difficult to get. Now, how do we determine what that number is? Well, we know because it told us 8,800 units were completed or, or are still goods in process. And it said it's 40%. And I'm going to just, again, format my painter, just make it easy for you to see and organize this information. So far, not so bad. Then we're going to take, and what's 40% of that 8,800? I'm just going to use a mathematical computation in this spreadsheet here and I get 3520 and again I'm going to just make it easy for you to follow by formatting things a little bit easier so now we've got our sum total of 55,700 55, units to account for and we have the equivalent units of 50,420 the major thing what we're doing here with this particular exercise is we're determining in this column here, we're determining the number of units to account for. That's quite important because once you know what the number of units to account for, it's a little bit easier, in my opinion, to calculate what the equivalent units are because they're going to tell you um, at the end of the year, our goods and process is 10% complete or 40% complete, that sort of thing. So that being said, we're going to be able to calculate the, the correct number of equivalent units because we know the total amount of units to account for, and that is the 55,700 units. And our equivalent units produced based on this um, accounting, we have 50,420. So that's part of our answer. Now, it asks us what is our equivalent units per unit, our average cost. Well, to do that, we need to take our direct labor because that's going to be our driver here. We're doing it based on direct labor, not on overhead or anything else. So we're going to be using our direct labor number, which is a 266-300, because we want to base it on 
our equivalent cost per units for direct labor. And that's really, really important. Now, so the next step then, I'm going to again make this something that we can easily follow. Now we have our 50,420 units, equivalent units. And again, I'm formatting to make it easy for you to see. And our answer then is going to be our division, dividing the two together. And it's $5.28. So A, the answer to A is what is our equivalent units for direct labor for the year? And it's going to be the 50,420. That's our answer for number A. Number B answer is $5.28. And how do we come up with that? We take our equivalent units produced, which is here, and we multiply by the actual overhead, not in, I'm sorry, direct labor cost in the period. I'm going to highlight this as green. And that's the answer to number three of your homework problems. Now let's go to the next one. Okay, let's check the next problem. It says, refer to the information regarding on the paying department of the Richard, Richardson factory for the month of June. Richardson uses the FIFO method of inventory costing. We have a beginning um, goods in process, and it starts with our 5,000 units. Our materials that are completed 70%, um, labor and overhead combined is 25%. Our material cost for May is 7,350, and our labor and, and overhead cost for May combined number 3,125. The units that were started and completed are 40,000. The ending goods and process inventory is 4,000 un units. 40% is complete for materials and 10% is for labor and overhead. The manufacturing cost, which is again uh, for materials, is 96,975, and labor and overhead is 79,470. We want to compute the equivalent units for direct materials, direct labor, and overhead for June. Now, I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. I'm going to essentially copy this information just so that we don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So I'm going to copy most of this, and then I'm going to make some changes. And again, I think the key to all of this, if I, if I be, if I'm honest with you, I think the, the key is really organizing the information. So I'm going to add a couple um, columns here. And again, I'm just setting up the problem so that you can, it can make it easy for you to understand what I'm doing. And also, you can use a strategy when you're working on other problems. Setting it up is important because you can see step by step what you're doing and why. And also, if you have an error, you, you can deduce or get help to figure out what the error is. So let's make this or this particular problem a little bit more organized and easier to use. Now it looks a little bit better. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be computing the equivalent units for direct materials first. So the first thing we need to do is go back up to the, our screen where it tells us all the details on beginning inventory, etc. So the first thing we want to do is we want to compute or determine what is our beginning goods in process. So what we start off with, according to this, is 5,000 units. And according to, the, according to this, it's telling us that our beginning goods in process is going to be 5,000 units. Now, we want to know what we've added on to the, the percentage of units added. Now, it's not telling us directly, but we can deduce based on the information. Percentage of completed units is 70%. And if you assume a big population of information is 100%, the big whole pool, and 70% is complete, we can take the difference. So I'm going to take the difference here and put 30%. I'm not going to do the math just yet. I just want to get the main numbers in. Started and completed, we were told that 40,000 units were started and complete. So I'm going to say 100% is on that side. So now if we can just take a look at one more thing, our ending goods. Now we have here ending goods in process. I'm going to go all the way back up to the top, and it says physical units 4,000. So I'm going to put the 4,000 here. But what percent I need to put here then is going to be based on what they're told, they told us on materials. Materials is at 40%. At it. So I'm going to put 40% here. So now I feel fairly confident that I have accounted for all of my units. So I'm going to do my sum total here, 49,000. Now I can do my, my multiplication. Again, we're just multiplying what is going to be our equivalent units 
And it's really going to be a straight multiplication entry. But the most important thing, I think, is setting it up so that you can understand what's happening here. You really need to be able to set it up. And I think that really makes it difficult with this particular project because you can't just do it in your head. You have to sit down on a sheet of paper or in an Excel spreadsheet like I'm doing here to, to, do the, to set it up so that it's organized. And then based on the information given in the example, you can calculate this. So if the calculation itself is actually pretty straightforward, it's really organizing the information so that you can calculate it. So now we have answers to the first part. And I'm going to put this in another color just so it could be highlighted. Our answer to our question is what is the equivalent units for materials? It's going to be the 40,000. So our equivalent units at the end of the year is the 40. And I'm going to cut and paste it so I can make sure it's nice and neat. And I'm going to provide this spreadsheet to you when I'm done. The most important thing is when you're looking at this particular project, I think just getting it organized is going to be really important because you're going to be kind of paddling upstream trying to figure out how to lay these numbers out and how they're related to one another. And I think this might be helpful to you. All right, so let me set up the next question and I'll get back. Now, we're working on the next um, question and ask us to, to, to calculate the units of the equivalent units of labor and overhead. And because everything in this particular problem is smushed together, we already know we're going to be using the numbers that relate only to materials, I mean to labor and overhead. What I've done is create the same old spreadsheet here or the, the different cells. The only difference here is I've let these column that says percentage of added and equivalent units produced be, to be eliminated, to be removed, because we're going to use the information that re relates to, um, to the materials, not to the materials, but also to the labor and overhead. So that being said, Let's take a look at it. Again, the, the number of units to be accounted for is exactly the same. There's no real difference here. So that's just a copy and paste from here to here. What's different then is what is our percentage added um, on labor and materials. So let's go back to our screen here. It said percent completed is 25. So if 25% is completed and you're thinking about the whole being 100, we have to assume the difference between 100% and 25% is going to be our 0.75. I mean, there are many ways to do this, but this is just, I think, the easiest way to do it um, when in this type of, of video tutorial. And we already know that our units that are done is 100% and they have 40,000 units, so we're going to put 100% here. Our last piece is our equivalent units for ending, 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 ending goods in the process. That number is going to be based on, again, this section right here and we're given 10%. I'm going to put 10%. And I think, oh, sorry, 10%. Hopefully, that, there you go. Makes sense. So now, we not only have our equivalent units for materials, direct materials, and we have our equivalent units for our labor and overhead. And again, I think the best way to tackle a problem like this is to put it down on paper or in a spreadsheet. I really do hope that this um, little tutorial is helpful to you. Let me know if you need me to go over any other problem. But problems three and four, which we um, talked about, probably the more complicated of the four problems that you had to do, um, we've demonstrated here. And I will, again, pro provide a copy of this Excel spreadsheet for you to take a look at as you go through your work. And have a good day.